Hi there and welcome to my channel. Now what I've got here, you may not have seen before, is my Long Easy ARF. Unlike all the other Long Easy ARFs I've seen, this one is powered by a Pulse Jet. No silly little pusher engine in the back for this one. This is an 8 pound thrust Pulse Jet that I've built and thoroughly tested, runs very nicely. It should push this thing along at an extremely good rate of speed. I haven't flown it yet because the weather here has been absolutely awful for the last two weeks and I'm dying to get this thing into the air but not yet. Hopefully in the next few days the weather will clear. At worst uh, there's a model jet meeting here next weekend so I'll probably throw it in the air then just anyway because it has to fly and I get a bit impatient. But as you've seen if you watch my other videos I don't do things by half measures. I'm a bit of an all-out kind of a person so the first flight will be very interesting to say the least. For those that are wondering how this thing's built and what's gone into it I'll give you a quick rundown. The pulse jet engine, which I haven't bolted on here so I can take it off and show you, that's it there. Uh, this is an engine that typically would cost you about $300 US if you wanted to buy one. It produces 8 pounds of thrust and consumes an enormous amount of fuel. But it's very simple, surprisingly reliable, and it's a lot cheaper than a turbine. If you wanted to buy the smallest turbines, or the average small turbine that you buy is at least $1,000 US, and that's for a cheap Chinese one. If you want a good one, you're looking at closer to $2,000. 300 bucks, it's a lot cheaper. Hopefully it'll enable more people to get into the interesting side of jet flying with models. Now, this is a pretty standard 46 size ARF. I bought this one on special for $99 New Zealand, that's $60 US. I've made a few changes though to allow for the pulse jet. First of all, there was a turtle deck back here and a lovely bubble canopy. Well, they had to go because that's where the engine's sitting. I made up this aluminium heat shield, which basically sits across where the turtle deck was. It's pretty important to have a heat shield because these positive engines run red hot. And when you see them going, if they're sitting static, they run so hot that they basically destroy themselves in a relatively short space of time. Once they're in the air, of course, you've got cooling, keeps them cool, not a problem. But made the heat shield that fits on the top, which is pretty important because right underneath is the fuel tank. And whereas the ordinary ARF with the two-stroke motor had a little, in, little fuel tank in the back here, this has a 20-ounce fuel tank, which is much bigger. But that, even that big tank there will only last about three minutes. That's how much these engines drink. But fortunately, they drink gasoline, so it's a lot cheaper than glow fuel. Now, the rest of the thing's pretty standard. One change I made is I altered the angle of the, of the foreplane here. One of the problems with these long easies, and you'll probably find a few videos of them on the net and a few people gri griping about it, is that they have a really odd flying characteristics. You see a lot of videos where they're flying along runway, pull on up elevator, they leap up into the air and then basically fall out of the sky. I think the reason for that is that when I looked at this design, the people who built this RF obviously didn't know a lot about aerodynamics. This foreplane is actually at a negative angle compared to the main wing, which is stupid because the way a canard gets its stability is by having the, the, the foreplane at a higher angle than the main wing. The idea behind that is that as the aircraft rotates upwards, this foreplane will stall first and therefore the nose will descend again. So it makes it stable. You can't actually stall it. It'll simply go into a mush where the, the foreplane is just on the stall and it'll fly slow and, and descend. Now, by putting the foreplane at a negative angle, you can get something called a deep stall. That's a very bad thing. What happens is when the nose comes up, the rear wing stalls first, and when that happens, the plane just does that because the front wing is still lifting. In effect, it'll pop up on its tail and then fall out of the sky. Now, a lot of the videos I've seen, a lot of the first-hand reports I've had of these things is that's exactly what they do. People find that on takeoff they just crash. Or they're coming into land and perhaps the nose leg touched first, it bounces up in the air, the rear wing stalls and it falls out of the sky. So as they come out of the box, they do fly, but they're actually rigged to fly more like a flying wing. This just basically comes along for the ride and to provide a bit of pitch control. So as I say, I've altered it so it's now like a standard canard and therefore, hopefully, it'll be a lot more stable in the air. But I guess we won't know until I try it. Um, the wind's blowing a gale outside, has been for a couple of weeks. As soon as it stops blowing, I'll get into it. So if you're not a subscriber to my channel already, I suggest that you subscribe if you want to see what happens with this thing, because sometime within the next week or so, there will be a video showing the first flight of this aircraft, be it successful or otherwise. You've already seen one long easy completely destroyed on my channel. It might be your chance to see another one, except this time there's almost certainly going to be fire and explosions involved, so there's something to look forward to. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you want to see the outcome. And if you've got any questions or comments, just leave them on the form on the YouTube page. Or you can go to my own website, um, ardvark.co.nz slash p.
PJET, which is for PJET, PulseJet, and you can contact me through the form on that, that website. In the meantime, thanks for watching and stay tuned.